as I'm writing that out, my practical real world experience with that, with not only myself, but with many, many, many others who have become successful, have owned businesses and have, you know, reached the heights that so many people uh, profess to want to reach. You guys got to realize this is what it takes. You know, I have these examples and I have these experiences um, and I have some very strong beliefs about what it takes for those to, to, uh, to become something and what people need to do to become something. And I hear these little terms, like you said, sitting at the water cooler, which was perfect. Uh, you know, I got to take my birthday off. Uh, the boss asked me to work weekends. I told him to get fucked. I'm not doing that. Oh, I was going to try not to cuss this one. Damn. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the boss asked me to work. I don't work weekends. Doesn't he know I got things to do? I don't even know what that myself. I don't know what that. What, I've, I don't I don't I don't even have that in my vocabulary. I would never say that because I'm going to I got a job one time. I remember uh, I was working at Safeway and Safeway, you know, again, they'd give me X number of hours, but I wanted to work more. And so I took a job on a Saturday and Sunday uh, in the wintertime working with uh, a, a brother of a friend of mine whose job it was was to paint this outdoor kind of factory facility out in the central part of Oregon. It was rainy and crappy, in, or central part of Portland, excuse me, rainy and crappy and and, uh, you know, place had been there for 120 years and you're literally painting over cracks and, 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 and wet paint and everything's, or, or, or I'm sorry, wet walls and everything's dripping. Uh, and it was just a miserable job and you had to be done by three. So we had to get there at six. So I'm getting up at four 30 on the weekends and we had to do it on the weekends because they had swing and graveyard shifts. They didn't have a day shift. That's what I did for an extra job. And they paid me, I don't remember, but I want to say it was probably 10 or 12 bucks an hour back when I was making six or seven, uh, you know, working wherever I was working. And so I would work at Safeway for five days a week, and then I would go do this job on the weekend. This is when I was a nobody. This wasn't when I was trying to invest in my business or learn how to make money or be an entrepreneur or any of those things. This was bred and born into me long before I ever got any ideas that I was going to become a business person, that I was going to be an entrepreneur. Uh, and so that's how I escaped where I come from is because I had these, these habits. I had this mindset and the mindset is this. I am Superman. I can do whatever it is that needs to be done. And if you have that, I'm Superman mindset, you're going to, I think, uh, go a whole lot further. But what's Superman? Yeah. You know, how does Superman work? Superman puts himself ahead of, or puts other people ahead of himself all of the time. That's one of his characteristics. Uh, so he has sympathy and he's empathetic. Uh, and th those, I mean, I'm not an empathetic person, but in the context of work, whatever the boss needs is what I'm willing to do. I put the boss's needs ahead of myself. Oh, I was going to go to the... No boss of mine ever heard me say, oh, I was going to go to the movies with my buddies tonight. Nobody. They'll never... doesn't exist. There's not a recording of it out there. It doesn't exist. I never said it. That is to say that the boss asked me to work and I just say yes. Now, I don't say, God, Billy and I, we're going to go hang out and I'm waiting for this movie to come out. It's coming out tonight, but I guess I can hang around for a cut. Nope. That's weakness. That... <laughs> That is you looking for sympathy, and looking for sympathy is a chump's game. Looking for empathy and sympathy from the boss or others at some sort of magnanimous contribution that you feel that you're doing is a loser's game. I would say, no problem, I got it. Yes. Now I go to my boys and go, I got to work, ladies, and all of my friends knew, and if you ask my friends today, They'll know because I haven't been at a Christmas party. I haven't been at this. I haven't made it to that. I've had to cancel on dinners and vacations and, and, and uh, movies and you name it. I've had to cancel on it because I got to work. Now, I had every intent of going. Many times I bought uh, tickets to go and I simply ended up, had to choose between work and going and doing it. Now, 
This is where I always get, this is where the people push back uh, fairly strongly because people go, well, you're crazy. You lost your whole life. You missed everything that you ever wanted to do and all that. Billy, you yeah. know me pretty well. Mm -hmm. Is there any, any part of my being, any part of the person that I am that makes you think I missed out on something? Not at all. No. That's the misnomer. That's what they want you to believe. That's what they tell you so that they can keep you under, under, your, under their thumb. They can keep you con controlled. They don't want it. They, the, the popular media, the social media, the people around you, your parents, your family, uh, your friends, they don't want you to see, they don't want to see you do better than them. And so one of the narratives that they have is that, well, yeah, you got to sacrifice, but you're going to ruin your life. You're going to miss out on all those experiences. And, and, and I don't feel that. I didn't take a vacation until I was in my 30s. But man, once I start taking vacations, <laughs> <laughs> I've done things and been places more times and, and, and than, 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 you know, the average person by a ton um, because I was able to invest that time and that effort and energy, get some extra money, and then we were able to go do things. And that's not just by myself. That's with me and my family. So mm -hmm. I've been able to afford and to, to put together a lifestyle with my family because I sacrificed the way that I have. And again, as far as it comes to family, it's as we talk about, it's quality time, not quantity time. Uh, and I have a ton of quality time. And Billy, again, knows my kids pretty well. And they're good kids. Yeah. Uh, you know, boys play too much video games, but my daughter's hardcore. <laughs> who doesn't? <it? laughs> but who doesn't? Right. And they're good kids. So that's my diatribe. That's what I want to talk about today because I sit at my desk and when I'm having these conversations with people, I just make a quick note to myself. And so here's my note for today. Make a note to myself to talk about this on the podcast as things happen in real time. Uh, and here are the, the notes. As I was going back and forth with this person uh, texting, I made this note to myself. You work till it's done, period. And then as, as each one of these sentences is coming, as he's giving me these excuses. <laughs> <laughs> you work till it's done, period. And then I said, and check in if you missed most of the day, period. Right? Again, practical mm -hmm. examples. And do all the work of others plus yours, period. Work weekends, nights, holidays, birthdays, and vacations, period. That's my note. Yep. And so as I'm writing that out, my practical real-world experience with that, with not only myself, but with many, many, many others who have become successful, have owned businesses, and have you know, reached the heights that so many people uh, profess to want to reach, you guys got to realize this is what it takes, and that that is, uh, and 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 the attitude and the approach that society teaches you is a hundred percent wrong because that's meant to keep you down. That's like having a drug addict for a friend, and he doesn't want to see you not be a drug addict. He doesn't want to see you be successful because he wants to blame him being a drug addict on all the reasons that. Uh, growing up with you and what you guys went through and all of that. If you're not a drug addict and he was, what's his excuse? Or he all is? Out. Right. What's his excuse? So they don't want to see you become, uh, become successful. Society doesn't want to see you become successful. It's ostracized anymore today. When I was a kid, it was very different. Uh, you know, all you did is look at rich people and go, God, I want to be like them. Today, it's a very different world. And that's because we have a society of perennial underachievers. 